Today we're talking about your third eye, which is your intuition. And those of you who were rolling through the 20 days and the 30 days of yoga these last couple of months will remember that this is your um, wisdom body. We're talking about uh, knowledge and understanding, looking inward as opposed to looking outward for anything, what to eat, how to dress, how to look, how to go about your day. So no more looking at social media to tell you what you already know. You don't need to look to anyone else. You can turn inward. You already know these things. We just pause. It's not going to come with words. It's not going to look like a magazine, but I promise you that information is inside of you. So the color is purple and the sound is OM. O-M or A-U-M, however you think about it. But we're turning inward to find a little more connection with ourself. If you are balanced in your third eye chakra, you're going to feel a little more in control. You're going to feel a little more, a deeper sense of self, a uh, stronger sense of morality. Um, overall, a little more um, connected. And if you're out of balance, you tend to feel a little indecisive, a little moody, a little insecure. Um, a little distrustful or distracted and depending on how you feel um, you're going to move it a little more in one way or the other to kind of balance yourself out today so as we start your practice um, I think we're going to start standing we're going to find a little tree pose find a little focus you know and maybe you take your gaze somewhere on the floor that tends to be as it sounds a little more grounding although maybe you take that inner gaze Right? Your concentration, your mind's eye, and plant it at forehead center. So long as you're not taking your foot to your knee, you're fine. So you could plant your foot at your calf or your ankle, and you're going to start by loving up on these wobbles. Right? What those wobbles actually do for you, whether you have a little wobble or you're dancing around your mat, your toe healed off and got a cup of coffee or tea or something, a little snack, come back. Stabilizing muscles so that it's actually better to wobble than to stand perfectly still. So whatever is happening in your pose, that's the yoga. You're going to give it three more breaths. And just find a little bit of focus, that internal stillness within whatever's happening. And take one more breath to reach. And then exhale, start your release. Yeah. Other side might be a little bit different. So you plant your foot wherever you need to. Maybe you got something a little bit funky happening in one of your knees or your hips, or you grab to reach a chair or the kitchen table, your kitchen counter, all great options. We're just starting to find a little bit of focus. And you'll notice the other uh, wonderful thing about these wobbles is that they bring your mind inward. So you're not thinking about what you're doing later on. You're not thinking about folding the laundry or whatever it is you're up to. You're just trying to balance on this one foot, activate all your muscles and your a little bit of focus to be grounded here, three. So some days we gotta keep it that simple. It's a brilliant part about this physical asana practice. You just start moving and all of these pieces start to land. So give this one more generous breath here and then you can go ahead and release it. Feel both feet rooted, all four corners. We're gonna start off with a little bit of sane. So as you reach for the sky, with breath or on breath, exhale, palms to forehead center. Inhale, fill up, and exhale, palms to heart. Fill up, and fold. Sweep all the way to standing, big sweeping motion. Exhale, palms to forehead center. Inhale here, palms to heart. Draw the breath in, and exhale, fold. Find your own rhythm. Inhale all the way to standing. Exhale, palms to forehead. Fill up. And palms to heart. Fill up and pause this time. Keep the breath moving. Keep your eyes closed or not. We'll find that familiar vibrational sound of OM. Fill up one more time. Ah. Uh, oh.
out, sweep all the way to standing this time. Gaze might follow, exhale all the way down. Inhale to a long spine and slowly chaturanga. As you step to high, maybe bring your knees down this first time through. As you open, maybe it's somewhere between cobra and upward facing and then downward facing dog when you're ready. Just a couple of breaths to really settle into the body. Right, this is where we're looking no longer outside of ourselves, but starting this internal exploration, maybe a little stretch in the hamstrings or the bend in the knees or the weight of your head hanging a little heavier. Let all those little bits of sensation draw your mind inward. As you work your feet a little closer together, you're going to take your right foot to the sky. Now find that familiar space, three-legged dog, your choice, whether you draw circles, maybe you could do a little karate chop, hiya, whatever you need to do to get into the body. And then when you're ready, exhale steps forward, crescent lunge, take a long breath in to reach towards the sky, maybe baby back bend with breath, exhale, drop palms and step to the front of your mat. Inhale to a long spine. And exhale, full. <laughs> Inhale all the way to standing. Doesn't matter what you're doing so long as you're breathing. Exhale, palms to forehead, pause. Inhale to fill up. Exhale, palms to heart. Breathe in. And forward fold. Inhale to length. Pause to step the foot behind you, crescent lunge. Breathe in, find that baby back bend. And exhale, drop palms to plant, three-legged dog. Opposite toes are kicking up and back to peel open. If you have no idea what's going on, that's even better, right? Feel your way through this. Again, roll out ankles, wiggle toes, take whatever you need here. Be intuitive, right? This is what it's all about. Find that inner wisdom, just listen to yourself. The best guidance system you're gonna find is the breath and then what feels good, very simple. Exhale, drop the foot, pause to get a good breath in and a better breath out. Right foot steps, warrior one. So as you come in here, you know, breath and body, what feels good? What do you need to do? Maybe you gotta take a little stretch up and back and side to side. Maybe you gotta interlace your hands and rinse your shoulders. You know, I don't know, what were you up to this afternoon, this morning? Maybe you sat at a desk all day. Maybe you're off to bed shortly. Maybe you're getting um, ready to feed the kids and do 8 million things. So moderate what you're doing to suit yourself. Don't worry about what it looks like. Let's get into that body of yours and then we're going to peel it open to warrior two. You want to find that steady, comfortable space, which again, I remind you as often as I can, it's the definition of your physical asana. Steady, comfortable position, not stressful, <laughs> <laughs> stuck in a box position. You want to be reaching, you want to find some ease in the shoulders, flip the palms, reverse your warrior, get a good breath or if you need a few extras, take it. As you exhale, you're going to press forward to find your half moon. So right hand comes down, left foot is reaching to the sky and the first thing you're going to do is love those wobbles because they're going to bring you right here into that foot, into your body in this moment and that's really what we're looking for. What do you need to do? Grab a block, Maybe it feels good to kick the heel a little higher or to engage your right hip a little more as opposed to just focusing on that top hip. You're going to start to bend the knee and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, maybe you fall out, come back. That's all this is really about. So if you have room to reach and find your little hoof there, you can take the dancer's bind. If you have a little short arms like Nancy does, she loves to call them her little T-Rex arms. You can reach, because that's where we're going. You might not grab a hoof, and that's okay. That's the practice. Be intuitive. Maybe you grab the, a t-shirt or the dish rag, whatever you got, hand to hip. We're going to come into dancers, though. So as you square the hip, pause, pause. Right there. So as you come into dancers, you start to square the hip and reach, but you set your gaze somewhere, and you start to be a little intuitive about this. So. You're reaching for the inside of the foot, and if you can't find a foot, don't worry about it. You got twice as much work as the rest of us, so even better for you. Awesome. Um, one more breath, Nance, how about that? 
And we're gonna come up into Utita Hasta. The Parangustasana part is you reaching your peace fingers to your big toe. It does not mean that you need to extend the leg and keep your knee bent. Work on that Tadasana, roll the shoulders back, squeeze that right biscuit, press the hip forward, work on falling out and coming back. Whatever it is you got, you have three breaths. Notice how focused you are. If you're focusing elsewhere, you're not in uh, Utita, I bet you. So, loosening up of the effort, right? That's what it's all about. You got one more breath here, and then we're going to start to wrap right into your eagle. <laughs> Whatever's left of your legs, work with it. Move your biscuits a little farther back to see you're in your heel. You're going to find a little more balance so there's less work in that poor standing leg of yours. Either flex the toes or press them into your calf, your Achilles. Palms can do anything. Maybe your palms today rest right at forehead center. Maybe closing your eyes invokes a little bit of wobbles. Maybe it allows you to feel every little single cell of yourself a little easier. As you unravel, revolve your half moon. <laughs> Presto, change grab a block. Don't worry about what it looks like. It could be a hot mess. Once you got the heel up and back, similar to what we do in your standing leg split, you're gonna drop the left hip a little lower so you got some more stretch on the right side. You got two breaths. You're gonna peel that right shoulder blade behind you, take one more generous reach. And as you step back through warrior one, peel all the way open through warrior two to find your horse. Heels are in, toes are out, we're all going to land a little bit differently here. So if you got to have a little bit of movement, I know there's a lot of work still in that front leg, that's okay. Engage left side, move side to side, but find your focus. So try to work with what's there, the burning in the right leg, maybe your mind is still a little bit wild, you want to come out of this and that's where your yoga starts, four of the best breaths you've given yourself all day long. It's like the rest of your day. We've got to find a way to find a little bit of comfort and ease in all of that uncomfortableness. And the balancing of the act of our day, just getting through the day these days. Forget all of the current events. There's a lot going on. So find that little bit of focus, just one more breath. Maybe you found that by closing your eyes, and then we're going to exhale to fold prasrita. As you work your heels out a little bit wider than your big toes, and you find a little squish on the outsides of your feet. You still want to be active in your big toes, active in the arches of your feet. But if you have a block or a stool or a dog or something lying around, you can slide that right underneath your forehead. Bring that focus back to your third eye chakra. You can let go of the ujjayi breath for a moment. Just take a couple of good breaths to surrender, to release. <sighs> My mom used to walk around when I was younger, <sighs> making all kinds of funky sounds. I used to think she was like, uh, oh, what was that movie like, Red Rum? You know, it's going to be like poltergeist movement. I was never sure what was happening, and now, now I completely understand it, as I'm sure you do. So whatever you got to sigh out here, go for it. And then you're going to move the block out from underneath you. You can wiggle your feet back underneath you, and you can take your palms for a walk to the back of your mat if you'd like. Um, we'll go straight for warrior one. If you're on board, if you love a little chaturanga, by all means, go nuts. But otherwise, land the feet, and we'll sweep right up. Root down to rise. Again, maybe this is a, a stretchy scenario. Maybe this is a palms to heart moment. If you really enjoy that courageous heart mudra from yesterday or the day before, sort of let go of what day it is. Maybe that's your jam today. You know, press the bum under, find that little bit of focus, and then we're going to peel open to warrior two. Right? Before we get off to all of that balancing act, to find that comfortable, stable position. So loosening up the effort, getting the breath to move the length of the spine so that as you flip the palms and you reverse the warrior and you take what you need here, when you're ready, we're going to move towards your half moon. So as you press forward, remember that whatever's happening is the yoga. The yoga isn't you adding some 
variation or making this look a certain way. It's you paying attention to what's there in the moment. So for now, you're going to start with there, what's there in your body. It might be a little wonky knee, it might be wobbles. Something might be going on in that top shoulder. Whatever it is, pay attention and support what's there first. And then we start to bend the knee. You don't have to reach. If you want to reach in that direction, maybe you go over sideways, really doesn't matter, but check it out. We're going to start to move mindfully towards your dancers. So you're starting to square the hips. You're starting to lift the heart. Maybe you're reaching those left fingers forward. Maybe it's a half prayer palm at heart center. But again, we're setting the gaze. We're bringing that focus of your mind as well as your drishti coming from your eyes. And letting that intention radiate through the rest of your body, right down to those little piglets, little flex of toes. And as you lift slowly out of this, we'll find Utita Hasta. If you want to check out the Padangustasana part, you're going to wrap your peace fingers around your big toes. And you want to work on whatever you're drawn to working on, right? That intuition. What do you need today? Maybe you reach just for the front of your knee. Maybe you're working on stability throughout the body. You don't reach for anything. But generally working on little bits of focus. And notice where that happens a little easier. Heart center, somewhere out gently in front of you. Forehead center. Just letting all that sensation draw your mind inward to stay focused on you. That's all. So you're going to wrap eagle. I know that leg is burning, but we're trying to find a little bit of comfort in the discomfort. It's there somewhere, maybe by moving the hips a little farther back so you're more in the standing heel. So there's a little bit of balance. Maybe by bringing palms to forehead center, hands to hips. Three. Right, looking for balance, not just in the physical body now, but that third eye chakra, feeling a little more in control. So you have choices, make them, you are not stuck here. As you unravel to revolve your half moon, last little burst of work here, take a block under the palm, drop the right hip a little lower, go for a big reach. Maybe it's the heart opening piece of this that kind of suits your mood today. Be intuitive. Maybe you got to take a little knee to nose and you swing the heel back up, right? Get creative. Just get one more generous breath in here and step back through warrior one. Slowly peel open to find your horse. Toes out, heels in. It'll hold you about eight breaths. So find that comfortable, stable position. Maybe you found more of a goddess pose today. Arms are reaching. Maybe you find now that courageous heart mudra. Maybe it's an open heart mudra. If you're not familiar with that, you kind of cup your hands, heels of palms, press pinkies, thumbs. You can open up all of the other little fingers. What's getting you to breathe? What's getting you to land in your body? First bits of tuition. Last three. Two, and then release. Cross reach at your wide-legged forward fold. Good place to be intuitive. We are often cueing you to take feet wider and wider and wider. Well, maybe you got to bring them together. Maybe you got to bend your knees. Maybe you've got to take some blocks under your palms, not just your forehead. Maybe it's frog or malasana that really suits you here, right? You are not stuck in a box. I'm going to give you a foundation to work from, but ideally this practice is about you making it yours. And as we find those little bits of intuition, as we feel a little more balanced here in that third eye chakra, right? We feel a little more in control. We feel decisive. a little more connected to our self. That really is true alignment in yoga. This wisdom body, your true intelligence. So, so you give this one more good breath. 
Maybe some horse breath. <laughs> We're going to start to wiggle your feet underneath you. Okay. Kind of come up. Maybe you need to sweep to the sky. Maybe that feels really good as you get feet underneath you. And we'll exhale one more Uttanasana to fold all the way down. Find that moment of surrender. And as you inhale to lengthen flat back, we're going to move towards the floor. So we're going to find a supported fish. If you're not familiar with fish, I think, well, I'm not even going to think because I don't really remember, but we're going to set up legs out underneath you. So you can find a bum, find the blocks or bolsters, couch cushions, whatever you got. Even a, um, a foam roller works pretty well. It's a little intense depending on what kind you have, but you want to support the heart opener. You could take Supta Baddha Konasana legs, which Nancy is doing. You can open your palms to the sky. You want to set up in a space though where you can start to release and find a little bit of that surrender. I don't know if Nancy planned it, but she's got purple on. <laughs> Again, your breath is moving gently the length of your spine. One more ujjayi breath. Maybe you just feel the breath gently helixing, crisscrossing through the chakras, making its way up and down the length of your spine. <sighs> Just simply feeling the connection first to your physical body. Maybe you feel a little sweaty. Maybe it just feels good. It doesn't need to have a, a word to define it. Just start to move a little inward. You feel the breath, the energy of the breath moving through the body. Maybe it feels soothing. And so move a little deeper. Noticing how you feel you have maybe decided to move towards little supine twisties or extended legs. You are supporting yourself somehow, this intellectual body. And how can you support yourself? And then move a little deeper still. Just being a little more intuitive. We're not looking not even to me, not to Nancy, not to books on yoga, just feeling your way through this practice, making it yours. About eight breaths. Maybe noticing you feel a little more connected, a little more whole. A little more grounded in yourself, your true self. If you feel safe and supported and rooted here, maybe you stay for Shavasana, otherwise I invite you to extend your legs, maybe wiggle out supports from underneath you and come all the way down. Feeling less distracted more centered, more still. <sighs> Shavasana.
So depending on what you're up to this afternoon, I'm just going to take a moment to pause where you are. It's not really about the physical asanas. All of that to get here didn't matter if you could bind your half moon. It didn't matter if you could balance an eagle. All of those physical postures to get here. So this is what you want to take with you. You want to tuck it behind the heart, tuck it in the pockets. Soak it up. If you're going to make your way off the bed or something a little more low-key, if you have time to linger, linger. Otherwise, I invite you gently to tuck your knees. Maybe you're rocking and rolling. Maybe you're curling up on one side of your body. But gently moving yourself to seated. We're going to come back to this idea of placing ourselves on purpose Intention, feeling the weight of our shoulders drop, our jaw drop, balancing all several pounds of our head gently on top of the spine. <sighs> so you let your mind settle to meet heart center with gratitude. Supporting yourself with breath, with love, <sighs> respect as you move your mind to forehead center, bringing thumb knuckles to follow. Together we bow and we say, Namaste. <sighs> so more than anything, be as good to yourself through the rest of your day as you tend to be in this practice. And we will see you tomorrow. Toodles.